Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Helena Catholic Church for the celebration of the fifth Sunday of Lent. It is a joy to worship with you today. In order to preserve the sacredness of this Eucharistic celebration, we ask that all phones be silenced and out of reverence, please refrain from chewing gum and texting during Mass. As Catholics, we fully participate in the celebration of the Eucharist when we receive Holy Communion. We are encouraged to receive communion devoutly and frequently. In order to be properly prepared to receive communion, Catholic participants should not be conscious of grave sin and should have fasted for one hour. A person who is conscious of grave sin is not to receive the body and blood of the Lord without prior sacramental confession. If you're not of our faith or outside the church, please come forward to receive a blessing. The readings for today are found in the Journeys Songbooks, number 896B. Please stand and join in singing our gathering hymn. Give me justice, O God, and plead my cause against a nation that is faithless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I welcome all of you to St. Helena Church as we gather on this rainy Sunday morning, the fifth Sunday of Lent, and as we come before the Lord. Let us prepare to give him thanks as we call to mind our sin and humbly beg his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. 
Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. If we have any children who are here for Children's Church, if you'd come forward. Well, good boys and girls, let's say a little prayer before you go. Lord Jesus, as we come before you on this Sunday morning, we give you thanks. We praise you, Jesus, for the glory of your resurrection, for our hope that we might spend eternity with you. And we ask you, Spirit of God, to come upon these boys and girls and upon all of us who are gathered this morning, that we might hear and understand the wisdom of God's holy word. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their guard and they, their God, and I sh they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to the greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I, I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sins no more. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. You may have noticed a brief but intriguing comment in today's gospel right at the beginning when St. John tells us that a group of Greek-speaking Jews who were in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover feast came up to the apostle Philip and told him that they wanted to meet his teacher, Jesus. John says Philip then went to Andrew and together the two of them, Philip and Andrew, went to Jesus in order to convey that request. From that time on, 
John doesn't tell us what happened, but we do know that this is how faith begins. Faith begins with a very simple person-to-person -person encounter with Jesus Christ. And if that was true 2,000 years ago, it is no less true for us today. Admittedly, our way of encountering our Lord Jesus is somewhat different than it was for the disciples of that time 2,000 years ago. But having said that, our encounter with Christ is no less personal and no less real. In fact, our Lord has given us a sure way to encounter him in a very personal and intimate way in the seven sacraments of the church. In each of those seven sacraments, our Lord Jesus himself reaches out to us. Normally after someone else, a parent, a godparent, a sponsor, or a friend, brings us to Jesus, introduces us to Jesus, just like Philip and Andrew did. From that point on, our Lord invites us to spend time with him, to come to know him, to respond to him. For most of us, our journey with Christ began very early in life in the sacrament of baptism. And for many of us, the journey will end with the sacrament of the anointing of the sick, also known as extreme unction or the last rites of the church. In other words, from the time that we're born until the moment of death, we encounter our Lord Jesus in the sacraments which he instituted for our salvation. Some years after we're baptized, for example, God strengthens us by giving us his Holy Spirit once again, this time with all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit to guide us. For those who are called to the sacrament of marriage, matrimony shows them and it shows us the way to heaven through family life here on earth. And yet, of the seven sacraments, only two are given for our daily walk with Christ. These two sacraments are received not just once in a person's life, like baptism or confirmation, but over and over and over again. And I'm speaking about the sacraments of the Eucharist and reconciliation, mass and confession. These two sacraments, namely mass and confession, are the two legs upon which we stand, the two legs that carry us in our daily walk with Jesus Christ as he leads us to heaven. And as you know, it's much easier to walk on two legs rather than on one. If we try to walk or hop along on one foot, it's not long before we fall. Unfortunately, there are many Catholics who try to follow Jesus in this way, on one foot only. In other words, they go to Mass, but they do not make use of the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Therefore, they do not avail themselves of the powerful grace which Jesus gives us when we fall into sin. As a result, many Catholics stop practicing the faith altogether. They say they don't get anything out of mass because they don't make use of the sacrament of confession. You see, reconciliation is the most powerful way that our Lord extends his healing and forgiving love to us. It truly is the sacrament of Jesus's divine mercy. You know, several years ago, Pope Francis gave a talk about the Sacrament of Reconciliation, and it was addressed to the priests in Rome who hear confessions of all the pilgrims who come and visit the major basilicas of Rome. And I'd like to share with you today some of what he had to say. Now, bear in mind, this talk was given to priests who hear confessions. The very first thing the Pope said to them was let yourselves be educated by the sacrament of reconciliation. When a priest hears a penitent's confession, he should be examining his own conscience, the Pope went on to say. 
do I as the priest love the Lord like this elderly woman whose confession I'm hearing? Am I as a confessor willing to be changed, to be converted in my own life like this penitent whom I am here to serve? Those who confess to us as priests edify us, the Pope said. They edify us and they educate us. The Pope then went on to say that there's no sin which is too great to be forgiven. The only people who are not forgiven are those who do not seek the forgiveness of God. They are like people who remain in the shade, in the shadows, the Pope said, and so aren't warmed up by the sun on a sunny day. Pope Francis also told the priest that when people come to confession, the experience should be one of understanding and ultimately peace. Every penitent who is sincere should leave the confession with greater joy and with a greater hope for salvation, even if their faces are bathed with the tears of repentance and sorrow for sin. A good confessor should not make light of the sins that a penitent confesses by saying that their failings are not important. But on the other hand, he should not be legalistic or overly harsh or judgmental. Rather, he should take the penitent by the hand on the journey of salvation and accompany that person. That's a beautiful image. Two disciples of the Lord, priest and penitent, in that moment, walking hand in hand in their journey to God through Christ. The Pope went on to say that the priest needs to be a man of prayer in order to be a good confessor. He needs to go to confession himself frequently and ask God's forgiveness from another priest. And I can certainly vouch for that. Priests are sinners too. Priests sometimes sin in various serious ways, and they need to go to another priest to confess their sins. For myself, I've always tried to go to confession monthly because it helps me to stay on that right path. Now, it's true that some people, as they get older, cannot come to confession as frequently. Perhaps at that point in their life, they are already at peace with God. But younger people need this encounter with our Lord Jesus because the temptations of this world are simply too great. When a priest hears the confession of someone who confesses a serious sin, he should never be thinking to himself, the Pope said, well, at least I haven't done that. He should think instead, God in his mercy has protected me from that sin. How often has the Holy Spirit said to me, I protected you from that sin? Not because you were worthy, but as a special grace, because you are a priest. Administering the sacrament of penance, the Pope said, is a great blessing and a privilege for our priest. It's the occasion to see how good people are, how much they love God, how willing they are to sacrifice and to even change for his sake. Most priests have witnessed real and true miracles of conversion in the confessional, the Pope said. And again, I can attest to that. Miracles of conversion. Those are the ones that are the most important of all because they lead us to eternal life. Finally, the Pope concluded by saying to the priest, remember that you are a sinner too. God has extended his mercy to you, and now in the name of Jesus Christ, you are to forgive others in his name. Lent will be drawing to a close soon, and Holy Week and Easter are coming. This week on Wednesday and Thursday at our regular times from 5 to 6 p.m., both Father Howard and I will be here in church to hear confessions. Father Howard would be in his usual place in the vestibule. I'll be here in our chapel of our Lord's repose. And so that's Friday 
and Thursday from 5 to 6 p.m. On that evening, the light will be on for you in preparation for our celebration of Holy Week, which begins next Sunday with Palm Sunday. Our God is merciful and loving. Today we pray, Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, I trust in you. I invite you now to rise and together let us make our profession of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. He rose from the dead on the third day. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With confidence and trust in God's mercy, let us offer our needs to him in prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop Michael, all our clergy and religious, for the intentions of all of us present today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all the holy souls in purgatory, heaven's hospital, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For an end to abortion and all sins against the dignity of human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those preparing to be received into the church this Easter, that they always keep close to the Lord in prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That many young people will respond to Christ's call to follow him in the consecrated life and in the priesthood, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the grace this week to die to ourselves and to more fully serve Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those for whom this Mass is being offered, for the sick and for those who have died, especially our beloved pastor, Father Mark Beard, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for allowing us to come each Sunday to celebrate this Eucharist in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord Jesus for humbling yourself to become a man and to die for the forgiveness of our sins, to be raised from the dead that we might receive the Holy Spirit. We ask you, Spirit of God, to cleanse our hearts of every sinful desire <clears throat> and give us confidence in divine mercy. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Behold before our wondering eyes, beyond the gates of paradise, shines out the tree of life adored, the cross of Jesus Christ our Lord. Behold, behold the glorious wood upon which hung our only good. It bore him up in offering, the Lamb whose praise the angels sing. All glory be to him who died, all honor to the crucified, who lives and reigns eternally with Father Spirit. One in three.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, but through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Sanctus. Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, 
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. <clears throat> through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord.
the Lord at all times. His praise shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord. For He has been so good to me.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and that of his Holy Mother, I demand and command that any evil spirits, hexes, vexes, triggers, trances, vows, and demonic blessings among those who have gathered, their loved ones, and their possessions. Through the authority of Holy Mother Church and the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I bind them separately and individually and break all seals. They are bound and the seals are broken. They are done so in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Totally yours, Immaculate Conception, Mary, my mother. Live in me, act in me, speak in me and through me. Think your thoughts in my mind, love through my heart. Give me your dispositions and feelings. Teach me, lead me, and guide me to Jesus. Correct, enlighten, and expand my thoughts and behavior. Possess my soul. Take over my entire personality and life. Replace it with yourself. Incline me to constant adoration. Pray in me and through me. Let me live in you and keep me in this union always. Amen. I want to thank all of you for coming to Mass today. I hope you have a beautiful Sunday. Today is the feast of St. Patrick, the great apostle to the Irish. Tuesday is the feast of St. Joseph, who is the patron of the Universal Church. Uh, it's a, a solemn feast, and I invite all of you who can to come to morning mass on Tuesday, which is at 7.30 a.m., and we will celebrate the feast of St. Joseph. Um, yesterday, and perhaps today as well, there were... Uh, representatives from the Full of Grace board who were selling uh, the auction tickets for, uh, to benefit Mata Dolorosa schools, so they may be outside today as well. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. <laughs>